Hello, and welcome to Getting Started with Power BI. In the next 10 minutes, we're going to show you how to build your first visual in Power BI. It's a tutorial with steps and by step instructions. This video is actually a short summary of some weekly live webinars that we're doing every week, Monday lunchtime and Tuesday evenings. This is the London Business Analytics Group, and it's part of our series that we're running during the lockdown called Solving Analytical Challenges in Power BI. So we hope to see you at some of the live webinars. Uh, the links are in the comments below. See you there. Let's get started. We need two things. First of all, the data. Secondly, Power BI Desktop. To get the data, there's a link in the comments below, and that will take you to the public OneDrive folder that you see here. In that folder, there's three directories. Well, there's one for each week, each session that we do. Uh, I want you to click on the directory, Getting Started with Power BI. Once you see that, you've got all the files there. Just download them all, and don't forget to unzip them. Power BI can't see inside uh, a zip file, so it's important to do extract all once we've downloaded them. Once we've got that, the real important file is this iris data. That's a, that's a data file that we'll be analyzing. Let's have a look at it in Excel. Here it is. It's a very old file from the 1930s, very famous file. It's got 150 rows. Each row is a different measurement of a different iris flower. There's uh, three species of iris flower, Setosa virginica versicolor, and there's 50 observations of each. And for each observation, what we do is measure the sepal length and width and the petal length and width. Let's have a look at that. That's a CSV file, even though I've opened it in Excel. Here it is opened in an editor, Notepad++, just to prove the point that it's actually uh, a CSV file. Now, we've, I've mentioned uh, petals and sepals. What are they? If we look at this picture of an iris flower, and then what we can do is this thing here is the sepal, and the smaller one here is the petal, and that's what the measurements relate to. The other thing that we need is the Power BI desktop software. That's what we'll be using to import, clean, analyze, and visualize our data. It's free software. We can go and download it from powerbi.com, then go to products, and into Power BI desktop, and the download button is there. Once we've installed it, or perhaps we've already got it on, on the work computer, one good thing to do is to just check, go to help, and about, and just check you've got a recent version. Um, here we are, it's April the 2nd today, so I've got the March 2020 version. Uh, you really want a version that's in the last couple of months. It's updated every month, and the updates are quite significant, and uh, it's good to have a recent version. Secondly, what I'd like you to do is to go into File and Options and set a particular option. If we click on Options, what we'll see is here we've got something called Preview Features. These are features that are just introduced to the product in the last couple of months. Uh, they're in preview and you've actually got to switch them on uh, if you want to see them. And the one that I really want you to switch on is this one right in the middle. It's the updated ribbon. Let me just go to it. And here we are. Uh, that's a much more modern Power BI ribbon. It's also exactly what I'm going to show you. It's a much better ribbon. It's more like the Office ribbons. So you will see what I see with this ribbon here. You might have to restart Power BI Desktop. And so we've got our data. We've got Power BI Desktop up and running. We're ready to go. Let's import our data. We click on Get Data, and we can see all the different data sources. If you want, you can have a look at all the different data sources by clicking on more. And we'll see that there's data sources from all sorts of different databases, from Azure data sources, and even online services. But what we're going to do is just click on a text CSV file. That's our iris data is in that format. So I'm just going to connect to it. I'm going to point to the file. I'm going to open it. It's going to show me a preview in a minute. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click on Transform Data. This brings me up a new window. This window is called the Query Editor. The Query Editor is a really powerful part of Power BI. It's where we clean, import, transform, shape our data. We're going to see a lot of the Query Editor in later sessions. But for now, it's just a flyby. We're just looking at our data. It looks fine, too. So I'm going to say Close and Apply. And that will now load all our data into Power BI. 
and we come onto the main Power BI window, what we've got here is we've got our data set, the color columns down here. Uh, notice that we've got our palette of kind of uh, standard visualizations here, and this canvas here is where we're going to build our, our visuals. Let's build our visual. What we're going to do is build a scatter chart. So we're going to click on the scatter chart on the palette. That puts a template on our canvas. I'll just make it a bit bigger. And then if I click on that, I've got the board around it. We've got this feels well here. And we've got, this is how we configure our charts. Each chart, each different type of chart has a slightly different feel well. So for a scatter chart, we've got our details and we're going to put observation. We want each different observation to be a different uh, point and let's say that we want to compare petal length on our x-axis with petal width on our y-axis we've got our basic scatter chart and then say I'm going to put species on my legend so different species of different colors and there we are we have our first basic scatter chart our next job now is to improve it by clicking on the format pane here we can change the appearance of almost any aspect of the chart I'm only going to change a couple of things, but you can see from the list down here that uh, you can change many things. So let's go in and click on title. It's given us a automatic title, but what I will do is give it my own title. And what I'll say is actually, I want uh, the background color of that title to be a yellow and I will center it and I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So that's my title changed. I can also come along and say, well, I want maybe three different colors for irises, or maybe I'll just change my Versi color, and I could choose a standard color or a custom color, and I'll make that uh, green. So there you are, that's two changes, but we can make many more changes to it. Let's have a look at the filter pane on the right-hand side. This is very useful. It allows us to filter on all sorts of attributes. So for example, I can click down on the species and say, I just want to see my setosas and my versicolors. Or I can say, actually, I'll just take those filter off. Different uh, columns have different filters, the petal width and petal length are numeric. So when we see the sort of filter, it's kind of numeric filter. And, and so what we could say, let's have a filter on where it's less than four centimeters. And it's filtered like that. Right. The observation, um, we can either do advanced filtering, we could do basic filtering, which is a pick list. That's not really useful for us to see individual observations, so I'll, I'll clear that. Notice that the filters are in three types. Filters on the visual, filters on the page, and filters on all pages. We've only got one visual only on one page. Later on, we'll have several visuals on a page and, and several pages, so that will make more sense then. Let me just unfilter that. One thing we might want to do is when we publish this and our users, our readers look at it, we may feel that it's not useful for them to be able to filter an observation, petal length and petal width, but it is useful for species. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come and hide the filter. That seems to do very little on Power BI Desktop, but we'll see when we come to, let me hide that one, when we come to publishing it, that our users won't see those free filters. Now go ahead and save your file. Click on Save up here. I've already saved my file as Iris Demo. The next step is only possible if you've got a Power BI Pro or Power BI free license. Um, I've got one of those, so I can click on Sign In. And I'm going to sign in as my work address. You've got to have a work address to have a Power BI license. A Gmail address or an Outlook address that don't work, unfortunately. So now I've signed in. It's signed me in. I think that's my password. That's good. Lovely. And it signed me in here up here. Great. So now I can come along and I can publish my beautiful visual, I'm going to publish to a workspace. Workspaces are kind of areas uh, for teams. And I'm going to publish to my workspace. Everybody, even with the Power BI free license, has a My Workspace. It's pushing the Power BI data and visuals up to the service where we can have a look at them. That will open a browser. And that browser will hopefully show our report. 
when it comes up. Lovely. And if I click on that, notice that uh, we've got a report there. If I go and click on like my filter pane, only the species filter card is showing because we hit the other one. So I can say, or my users can interact with it and say, I just want to have a look at a couple of the species. That's it. What we've done is we've loaded a file into Power BI. We've um, created a visual. We've improved that visual with formatting, data colors and axes, and we've published it to the Power BI service. So hopefully that will really helps you to get started with Power BI. Our next video is all about visualization. We're going to reproduce a financial chart from Yahoo Finance that shows the price and the volume of a FTSE 100 company in the last few months, the last few years. We're going to learn about line charts, bar charts, and combination of those together. We're going to learn techniques such as filtering, slicing, using buttons and bookmarks. And we'll also learn about custom tooltips. I hope to see you there. Thanks.